My grandfather is a bird hunter. He tried his entire life to introduce turkeys and they never stuck. He had more horror stories than, than I can even count on bringing turkeys in and having turkeys die. The last time he brought turkeys here, about 15 chicks, he put all of his little turkeys in the pen. We came out the next day and they were all dead. Fire ants. It's just kind of wild that after trying for 20 plus years, the year after he died, we had that big rain. Over a foot of water in less than 24 hours. A rain of biblical proportion. It filled up that whole creek system that ran to the, the south border of the ranch. Birds came in and it's never left. They're still here today. It thrills me every time I see them and I can't believe it. I guess it was kind of his last gift to the ranch. It's not only a blessing for a moment, but it's a blessing for generations. The biggest challenge this week is not being a turkey hunter. It's fun to chase them around. I'm just not very good at it. There's some pretty good information on turkey populations over the last 100 years. Early part of the 1900s, they were driven down to really low levels, even up into the 40s. And then through a lot of these some restoration efforts, trapping turkeys moving around the state, you know, through the 50s and 60s and into the 70s, the real grand turkeys were really reestablished throughout all their suitable habitat. Turkeys are very social birds. I think a lot of people that see turkeys are out, you know, on a ranch during hunting season, and what they see is a large flock of turkeys. Then the breeding season starts, you know, the, the large flocks disperse, the hens they go to the gobblers, that's gobblers display and gobble and strut to attract hens. And then after hen is bred, she moves off looking for a place to nest. And at that point, hen does not want to be around another turkey. They're very solitary, they're very shy and secretive. Throughout the year, the, the turkeys are going to use the landscape in very different ways. So creating habitat for wild turkeys is a little bit catering for all those different times of the year. So your turkeys are going to be there during the winter, they are going to be there during the breeding season, and within the different stages of, of each one of those life cycles. The turkeys are the very last to go to sleep. When it gets dark, they go to their roosts in the branches of trees. And all is quiet for the night. So that's exactly where we don't want turkeys, in uh, some telephone poles right along the uh, busiest road on the ranch. If we could put artificial roosts in areas that are, you know, more suitable for turkey, I think we could pull turkey out of areas that are, you know, heavily pressured and highly traveled and uh, get them into more secluded areas of the ranch. Question that we get from landowners frequently about what's my limiting factor for turkeys? You know, I have water, I have nesting cover, I have all these things. Why don't I have turkeys? Well, oftentimes they go out and look and it's, there's nowhere for them to roost. We've got birds that are roosting every night along that whole road just in the telephone poles. So you think about all the stress that puts on, on turkey having to jump out of the roost, jump back in every time a car drives by. Think about what you could do with an artificial roost. The problem this end of the range has that this one doesn't, you can see big oak trees lining this creek. We really don't have that up here. So if, if there was an opportunity to create an artificial Bruce, I think this area in here would be great. Yeah, I mean, my biggest fear... Caesar Clayburgh Wildlife Research but... Institute is doing a, a really cool study right now where they're implementing artificial roosting sites, and I can't think of a better place to try that because we need it here. 
Yeah, yeah Stephen West. Very nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Yes, good. sir. How are you? Very good. I appreciate y'all coming out. I don't know what the future looks like for these birds in this area, but I'd, I'd be surprised if they stayed here much longer if we didn't do some work for them. We call it the South Texas Turkey Research Project. It all started off with this artificial or constructed roost stuff that we were interested in. And I got that idea maybe 15 years ago. I was out on a ranch and I just happened to notice under some of these telephone poles, there's a bunch of feathers and dung from turkeys. And all of a sudden you'd see another one. Clearly turkeys are roosting on them. So what that told me is these artificial structures will be used by turkeys where there's not enough natural roosting structures. We tried to locate as many different artificial roosts that there were in South Texas at that time. Bill had this brilliant idea to come and say, how about if we start analyzing things around the roost sites? Once you get that growing up, you'll see a big lake out this way. It's got a bunch of dead trees in it. Okay. Started looking at using geospatial sciences and technology. We started using uh, remote sensing, so satellite images, drones, to look at what was happening around roost and when. After four or five years, we learned some things about where to put these roosts so that the turkeys will use them. Okay, I'm going to take off. The first thing that we are going to do in order to identify a roost site is to use satellite imagery and map essential features. We are going to combine the information of avoiding disturbance with increasing the possibility of being close to water. Then we can use all that information to select a specific site where the roost location should be placed. Right here on the uh, west side of that lake, there's a little flat and uh, might be a good place. We can drive in there, we can get that pole in there real easy. That drone program is really exciting because it's given us a whole different look at turkey habitat and it's enabling us to look at it in a way that's much more efficient than we've done before going out with uh, tape measures and things like that. With the drone, we can get up and look at a large area quickly and understand where the holes are in the turkey habitat and where an area lays relative to water and, and put all those pieces together so we can get a right spot for a, a manager to put up a roost. Set up in the same spot that uh, we hunted yesterday. Those big gobblers and those heads were just right across the flat from us here. They were gobbling on our way in this morning. There are plenty of talking on our walk in here.
Let's go, let's go. He's running over here. Got him, dude. That's probably the coolest little turkey hunt that I've ever had for sure. And to be a mile from where it all started for me, as far as seeing turkeys go on this ranch, that's, that's pretty special. Let's go check him out. That's a pretty bird, man. Look at their heads. That is freaking beautiful. Look at the colors on them. They were showing off when they made these birds for sure. A couple days ago, I was like, man, I wish I got more fired up about turkeys. But after the past couple days, I'll be turkey hunting the rest of turkey season. My question would be, if we did put in artificial roost sites here, would that establish more of a resident flock of turkey in this area? This is that area we're looking at in the drone right here. We've got a big lake and we've got a creek that feeds this tank right here, which holds a lot of water. I mean, they'll walk past it every day, so eventually they should jump up in it. So Caesar Clayburg, when he first got to South Texas, there weren't any game laws or wasn't an agency responsible for managing the game species. And so Caesar took it on himself to put in some regulations on hunting to try to recover the population. Pull up. All right. Over the years, through the early 1900s, King Ranch's turkey populations did increase to the point where they could serve as a source stock for turkeys throughout the state and some of the southeast. And I've even seen turkeys on the island of Hawaii that originated from King Ranch. Turkeys have been a neat species for the King Ranch and Caesar Clayburg all along. Yeah. We're done. Nice finally seeing this project come to an end. Really grateful for the Caesar Flavor guys making the trip up here, sharing a little bit of knowledge with us. I think my grandfather would be proud. I think my favorite part of this place is the heritage. It has been passed down to me for five generations. When I'm gone one day, I hope that this ranch is showing the strongest ecosystem that's possible down here.